Well, good morning. We welcome everyone to our worship service this morning as we begin to settle in and prepare our hearts. And I know it's it's good to see everybody and, and uh, we're getting back into the normal of gathering and, and uh, worshiping together and fellowshipping together. And I can just sense the excitement uh, as we, we prayed this morning. We, we prayed for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit for this body of believers this morning. And so we believe that God is going to speak to our hearts and, and pour on us this morning. So we are going to begin with Scripture. Uh, we are reading from the Gospel of Mark because our series is in Mark following Jesus. And listen to the word of the Lord this morning. This is from the second chapter of Mark, verses 16 and 17. And it says, When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And upon hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you that you came for us because we have all fallen short of your glory. And Lord, we thank you that you welcome us in. In the name of Jesus, amen. May he add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. And we are going to get into worship this morning. Uh, we're coming back to the heart of worship this morning. So if you would stand with us and prepare to worship. As the worship team begins to play, just uh, allow all of the hustle and bustle of the week to fade away and just enter into his presence this morning. He is here. He's welcoming us in. He is, he is eager to, to receive our, our offering of praise this morning. So let's give him the praise and honor and glory and worship that he's due this morning. Spirit, Lord, we, we invite you. Pour out this morning, Lord. Fill your people. Lord, it, it's been dry around here lately, and, and Lord, uh, you gave rain last night. We give you thanks and praise. And Lord, we ask for rain here this morning, Lord, that you would refresh our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up these people this morning. Bring out and wake up the gifts and callings that you have on each and every one of them. Lord, I know you're here this morning. I know you're going to do mighty things. I can already sense it. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required.
open our eyes and open our hearts and open our spirits to what you would have for us today. Lord, I, I lift up this body of believers, Lord, and, and it's been a difficult season, and it's been tough, and we've gone through things, but you are still God. You are still on your throne this morning, and Lord, no matter what, what circumstances bring, Lord, we can still praise you. Your word calls us to praise you midst of trial, in the midst of difficulty, and so we are going to praise our way through this. In the name of Jesus, we give you honor and glory. It's all about you, no matter what's going on around. It's all about you, Jesus. Lord, help us to stay focused and, and in your presence this morning and, and through our lives, Lord, we ask it in your mighty name, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. All about you, Jesus. Yes, good morning. And this is a day of celebration. We do rejoice. We rejoice as a body that more of us are gradually able to meet together because I think we have a hunger, a hunger and thirst for fellowship with one another, but also with God. We're thankful that those who aren't able to be with us can follow online and still have that worship together with God there. Glory. And we glorify that. We just lift God up. Yes. It's also a day that we rejoice with our graduates and for what they have accomplished and have reached this milestone in their life. So we rejoice with them. We'll recognize them pretty soon. It's also a day when we celebrate Father's Day. So all of us have, all of us have had a father. And we realize that our earthly fathers aren't always perfect. And those of us who are fathers and look back and we see 
maybe mistakes that we have made along the way, and boy, I wish I would have done that a little differently. But yet we look at all, our Almighty God, our loving, perfect, Heavenly Father, who is perfect and loves us continually with a perfect love. I was reading today, I was reading this morning earlier, the, out of Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son. And various sermons have been preached on that and different focuses, but I was thinking of that loving father and he loved his son, he welcomed his son back who had gone astray for a time, but he also loved the son that was still there the whole time and welcomed him and encouraged him. And that's the father that we have in Almighty God. Amen. We praise him, we lift him up this day. So would you join me with a beginning prayer as we welcome God into this service and we seek to glorify him. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this day. We are thankful for your love for us, for the example that you have set. We are thankful for, for your forgiveness and that you are with us and you love us continually and always. We lift up this service to you, Lord. We pray that you will be honored, you will be glorified, because you alone are worthy of that praise and we desire to honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get the opportunity to honor our seniors. Um, we're missing one today cruise rule, but we also want um, four others that have been a part of our youth group now for at least a year, if not longer, to come up and join us. And that would be Caitlin and Vince. Great. Josh, you're going to have to get away from the camera for a minute. <laughs> and Rebecca. Come on, you're, you're a senior you're too. Let's go home. So you guys know these three. Rebecca joined our, our youth group. Um, last summer after Teen Mission, she joined us. Um, she actually belongs to the Pentecostal Church of God, but she's been ours now for a year. So, so we also claim her, and um, they've worked hard. Um, just, uh, I was praying yesterday, and it's crazy, but Caitlin and Josh have been a part of the youth group since before they were youth. <laughs> they were children who went with Chris and Sue to youth group for a long time, right? 11 years. Yeah, so. Caitlin's been in youth for 11 years. <laughs> Normally it's about seven or eight, eight years. Yeah. <laughs> um, we really just want to honor you today. There was a scripture that just came to mind and, and, and it was based off of the blessing and that, that song. And, and I remembered the scripture when I was praying for you guys yesterday on the way home. And it's number 623 through 27 and it says speak to Aaron and his son saying thus you shall bless the people of Israel you shall say to them the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace yes. so shall they put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them today I want to bless you guys because you guys have blessed Caleb and I yeah. so much trying not to get emotional because it is it's been beautiful walking with you guys something that you guys should know just a little testimony of of my own faith journey is that Caitlin and Josh have been an encouragement to Caleb and I since we stepped into leadership yeah they have constantly been on our side and tried to love us the best that they could even though they were they were youth <laughs> Caitlin's faith um it's definitely challenged my own because of her consistently asking for prayer. And I remember one of my first times at youth when Deb was still youth pastor and she came and she asked for prayer for her mama and she believed and she's like, I, I just want to believe that my mom's going to be great. My family is going to be back together. And I will be honest, that was not where my faith was. Yeah. I believed in, I definitely wanted healing for Nicole but I did not believe the way that her faith did. And I've seen restoration due to partially because of Caitlin's faith. And that has been a testimony for me. Um, 
Josh has just been a super sweet spirit in our youth group. He's been kind of this gentle, sweet guy who takes everything in, but then he's naturally just a leader. We'll have conversations around the table when we started, and he'd instantly chime in with advice that is beyond his years. Yeah. And Vince and Rebecca have definitely started to walk into the inheritance by joining this family. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited about that. I had the opportunity to speak with my stepdad this last weekend and just thank him for taking on my sister and I. And in that, I felt the Lord really share that when they, when Vince chose Jesus, he chose to walk in the adoption inheritance. And that Baroque gets to be a part of that. And Rebecca, I've loved watching you become this just like gentle little lion who's ready to pounce in faith. Yeah. And I'm excited to see that grow. So we're going to take an opportunity, a moment, and we ask that you guys join us as we pray and bless our youth. Father, we thank you for, for our seniors. We thank you that, we, that Kim and I have gotten to walk with them through their journey, through their faith, through, through their struggles and pains and triumphs. Father, I, I thank you that, that I've gotten to see Vince grow into the man that he is to become, to follow you, to the destiny that he has from you. I ask that you would hold him down in faith as he walks his walk, that he would begin to understand that, that you have more than, than ever, more, just more of you. Prevents. I pray that, that you would protect and guide Vince. I thank you for Caitlin and the faith that she has shown this church, has shown us, of all of the, that there's nothing impossible that you, that you can do. I ask that you would continue to strive into that faith for Caitlin, that Caitlin would begin to understand that that faith is going to move mountains in her life. As she holds fast to you, God, I ask that you would continue to, to hold fast to her. That as she goes into, into unknown territory, as she goes into college, as she, as she go, her and Rebecca get some roommate together, God, I ask that you would, would hold their faith together. And that as people begin to experience them, as they have friendships, God, that they would see that there's something different. There's a real faith here. Yes, God, we pray for Rebecca. We ask that, God, you would continue to make her, I agree with my wife, that there is a lioness that is about to pounce for your kingdom. Lord. And God, I ask that you give her the words and wisdoms and the boldness to move into that faith. Lord Jesus, I thank you for Josh. Yeah. And God, just like... Joshua is this fierce leader. I see such a gentle giant yeah. in faith. That, Lord, you have blessed Josh with the ability to perceive what's around him. Yeah. And, God, I ask that you would help further him as he walks into this, this new line. Lord, I'm thankful we get to keep him for two more years. Yeah. But, Lord, I also ask that you would expand his faith as he goes into into the secular world of, of business, God, that you would expand his faith and that he would be a mountain mover on That's your right. behalf. And Lord, that, uh, that you would raise up a peacemaker in him. Yeah. God, that you would stir his heart for your glory and your kingdom. I'm thankful that, that although this may be the ceiling for them in our youth ministry, Lord, I pray that we have given them a floor to expand on. Right. Lord, that you would send them out, Lord, and that, that we would see revival in their generation god that we would see your glory pour out on their generation god and and lord i believe in these four young men and women lord lord i also want to be faithful to lift up crews rule yes, lord. Yeah. lord that um there's a good man in there yeah. and god i pray that you would just anoint him for the calling you have on right. his life lord that you would make him a witness of your kingdom as he goes into the adult world that you would raise him up and that he would hear your voice louder than anything else. Protect him, Lord Jesus. I thank you for our seniors, and we honor them today. And we give you praise for what you've already done in their lives. And we ask that you would give them more. Yes, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. The church wants to honor you guys, so they have a small gift for each of you. All right.
Children are dismissed to go downstairs. Well, if, if you are if you feel like it, you're welcome to stand. If you wish to, to stay seated and, and worship, you are free to do that as well. Um, we are going to enter back into worship. I was just, uh, this, is, this is a song that's kind of special to me. I, I know I put it in a lot, but uh, especially now as we look around our, our world and we see all the things that are happening and, and the chaos and, and the, the virus and, and the, the, the political environment, it, it's, there's just a lot of turmoil in this country. And, and at times it's, it's scary. We, we think, man, where is all of this going? And, and how will this end? And, and the thing that, that always keeps me centered and brings me back is that, that God is in control. He's still on his throne. He has not been taken by surprise by any of this. And his will will be done. And so as, as we are the people of God in this environment, he, he just calls us to be about his business, to, to keep us uh, centered on him and, and no matter what to remember that he is on his throne and that we are to be about our father's business so as we, we sing this song just, just come back to again it's coming back to the heart of worship coming back to our God and his word and his truth no matter what's happening in our lives no matter what's happening around us he is God alone God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're unchangeable. You're unchangeable. Just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. In the good times and bad.
Jesus, Lord, if you'll turn in your hymns for the family. We're going to sing the, the great anthem of the church. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Number 616 in the hymns for the family.
seated. We're continuing our studies out of the Gospel according to Mark. Today we are in Mark chapter 2. So if you want to open your Bibles and follow along, uh, I'll be reading Mark 2, 5 through 11. Mark 2, beginning with verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralytic, your, sons are, your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing and the, and the studying of his word this morning. Prayer for the messengers, uh, Emmett and Kevy are already working with children, Junior Church, and Marissa and Angel are available for toddler nursery if needed. Uh, they're needed. They're needed. Huh? <laughs> well, I don't know, slow right now, right? <laughs> and Pastor Caleb will be sharing with us this morning. Pastor Caleb, would you come on up? Lord, I just pray that you will anoint Pastor Caleb as he is sharing the message this morning. I believe that as he has been preparing that you have been speaking to him. And I pray now that he, you will speak through him and give us the words that we as this body need to hear this morning. May you bless him and may you bless us with open ears to hear and to listen and to apply the word to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I don't have a mic, because I was silly not to go back and get it. So as uh, that's getting prepared. No, the, the, nope. He's got it for me. Trevor's on top of things, even when I'm not. That's why I roommated in college. Basically so that he could take care of me. Yeah. All right. Well, are you ready? Fantastic. Hopefully I am too. Uh, I want to start off today again, uh, thankful for fathers. Um, it's not really part of my sermon. I didn't make a Father's Day sermon per se. Um, but I was reminded as I was writing sermons that of my father, and also I was gifted with spiritual fathers in my life. And I know a lot of you have been either fathers or spiritual fathers or both. And I wanted to appreciate uh, that we have good fathers in, in our midst, that we have good fathers in our congregation, and that um, a lot of you actually were able to walk me uh, through my, my childhood, and, and some of you remember me screaming and crying and, and all of that nonsense when I was young, and thankfully, and standing on top of the house, there are lots of stories of little Caleb, um, and, uh, and, and I appreciate that you all have tried to keep me alive through the ages, and that you accepted me as, as youth pastor and pastor of this church, 
uh, that, uh, but you guys have been um, father figures in ways in my life, and you guys have been father figures in other people's lives. And uh, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my father, um, who, who prayed me into the gifts that he, that he knew was in me. And uh, not everybody gets to have fathers like that. I get that. I'm not naive to the fact that some we don't have fathers always like that. But if you don't have a father like that, it's not too late to go find a spiritual father. I think spiritual fathers are equally as important. Um, and I want to honor you guys as you've done that. I, I get to be a father. I, my wife bought me this shirt of the legend. And my kids have this, uh, the shirts that says, um, what is it? The legacy. So I, uh, I thought those were really cool. And I'm uh, just thankful, thankful today that I get to, again, get to honor my father in being a father. So we are moving into Mark chapter 2. Pastor Debbie gave us a wonderful word, as she says. It was excellent. It was amazing. And uh, I got to listen to it, and I agree with her. That was a great sermon. If you haven't listened to that sermon, please do. Uh, it kind of leads us in, as, as most times do when we go through a book. You probably should read the previous chapter so you can be current with the chapter that it is. If you don't, you miss some things. Um, but we are in cha Mark chapter 2. We're going to be reading through scripture a little bit, uh, and then we're going to pause and kind of break it down, and, uh, and hopefully we get what God has for us today. Um, most of us know the stories. Most of us know the scripture, um, but I think that it is good to go back to it. So uh, again, Mark chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 1. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come, come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not give him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. We have a couple of people in this story. We have four men, a paralytic. Later we find that there is religious people. And of course we have Jesus. Yay, Yay Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and in this story, I, well, I found that there are, there are people that you can identify with. Um, you can identify with the cripple. You can identify with the friends, and we're going to break, those, break that down a little bit. Interesting enough, when the friends brought him to Jesus, we, we automatically think, oh, Jesus is going to heal this guy. He's going to say, you're healed because of your friend's faith. And so, and, and so he, he brings him down, he looks up, sees his friends, and he says, son, your sins are forgiven. He looks at their friend's faith, and then looks down at the cripple, and says, your sins are forgiven. Now, he doesn't just do the physical healing. He actually does something more extraordinary. He does the spiritual healing Amen. first. And I was pondering this a little bit, and I was looking at the four friends, and I was like, God, am I, a four, am I one of the four friends? Now, a lot of us have heard sermons about this, but I, I, and, and I agree with them so much. Because the four friends saw the crowd. All right, they saw the front door being blocked, and they're like, "I'm still getting him to Jesus." If I if I hope that I am a friend that will get my other friends to Jesus, no matter what, that I'm willing to crawl, scream, beg, pray, tear up a roof. <laughs> Julie just cringed a little bit. Rat just cringed a little bit. But if you have to tear up the roof to get your friend to Jesus. And, and that takes work, people, because, see, the cripple, we're, we're talking about today's terms, the, that cripple probably isn't looking the greatest. He's a little muddy. He's a little ugly. He's a little bit beaten down. Cripples of that day and age weren't exactly taken care of. Now, he's got four friends, so he may look better than a lot of the other cripples do. I don't know if maybe this is a recent accident where, you know, he, he bonked some part of his neck and... Suddenly he was a cripple. Well, we got to get that taken care of. There's a guy named Jesus. But what I find interesting is the spiritual healing more than the physical healing that started. <laughs> I think that's important that Jesus shows that the spiritual healing is even more important than the physical. 
And how many of us are, are, are working at bringing our friends to Jesus like that? When we're out and around and with people, Jesus is telling us to take them to him. But are we willing to do that work? Are we willing to do that sacrifice? Are we willing to get in the muck and mire and fight the crowds to bring our friends, the people who don't know him, to Jesus? And then we have the religious group on the side there. And, and, and then Jesus heals, does it, Jesus forgives the paralytic sins, and their automatic relationship is like, hey, you can't do that. You, you don't have the authority to do that. And I think that sometimes we as the religious folk have a tendency to fall in those regards. We, ha- we like to think that we don't. And, but maybe I'm just talking to myself here, but sometimes I get cynical. Who is he to say that that person can be saved? He isn't really saved. He's still a cripple. He's still ugly. He still isn't what I think he should look like. He still isn't the persona of a religious person. So obviously, he's not actually saved. Obviously, he's not actually healed. And, and you can't say, Jesus, that he is. We, we, take, we take authority on ourselves that we don't have authority to say. Does that make sense? We don't have the authority to say whether somebody is saved or not. We can look at the fruit, but sometimes it takes work. Sometimes that, that muck and mire doesn't exactly just clean off all by itself. And sometimes I find myself the cynical religious person saying, well, that guy doesn't look saved, so I'm going to say that he's not. Instead of asking Jesus, the Father, who said, already said he was forgiven, whether he's forgiven or not. But so that I may know, so that they, and, and, and Jesus' next words were this. We're going to jump down to verse 8. The teachers have said, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. It almost seems like Jesus also saw this as a side thing. That he had done the miraculous already by forgiving someone of sins, but so that we may know that he has power and authority to do that, son, get up, walk, and go home. And the amazing, incredible part to most people is that the guy got up and went home. So God has authority to forgive sins and apparently has authority to heal people so that the paralytic and the cripple can get up and go home. Lord, help us to have faith in that way to both believe in the healing of the spirit and the healing of the physical. Jesus isn't here for my religious opinion. Jesus didn't come down on earth and and die on Calvary so that in 2,000 years, I could have a religious opinion of what God can and can't do. Jesus came so that he has authority on earth to do all that he wants to do. And hopefully I'm part of that. But the warning, and we're going to look through the warning of the scripture that I found is that hopefully we're not the religious people standing on the side thinking, well, he can't do that. Why is he doing it that way? Maybe he should do it this way. Maybe, maybe God should work in this area because that's the way I think he should work on. Maybe that crass person that works in, that walks in the door, well, he just needs more Jesus. Instead of saying, walking beside him and saying, can I show you to Jesus? See, a lot of times we as, as, as religious folk, now thankfully our church has been welcoming and loving. That's been a heritage that we have, we have received and we continue to do that. And I'm thankful. 
but we need to keep it in mind that that's some of the stepping stone that we could fall under. That's, that's, uh, that's a slide that we can fall under, not a stepping stone. That we can get too caught up in our religious belief system to recognize when Jesus walks in the door with a cripple. And then we move on. If you haven't noticed in, in, in Mark, is that he kind of moves from story to story to story. He's, it's very fast, it's very quick. Um, and, and it may not all be in the same, same timeline, but we're going to move on to the, the next story. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me. Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teacher of the law, who were with Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. In my opinion, this is almost Jesus' ministry wrapped up in, in a couple of paragraphs. You find Levi, a tax collector, one of the most hated people in that time frame. Why? Because they were cheaters. They were liars. They took more money than they were supposed to. Levi probably was one of those guys because he was a tax collector. That was kind of what they did. And so Jesus comes up to that guy, the most ugly of ugly, the guy that, hates the, that we hate the most, and says, hey, you, follow me. So Levi does, which shows some faith and understanding of, of that's Jesus. I want to know what he has. And then they go and party. They go and eat. Jesus is like, hey, party's at your house. And so they go and he invites his friends because who is Levi hanging out with? Probably not the best of the best in that society. Probably. They're pretty crass. And so the religious people are standing outside because, you know, they don't want to hang out with sinners. And they ask his disciples, who, interesting enough, are also around with the religious people. And they say, hey, why is he hanging out with tax collectors and sinners? And it says Jesus overheard, it, overheard what they said. So either one, they were in earshot, or two, one of the disciples, bold enough, let's be honest, probably Peter, goes in and, and asks Jesus the same question. Bro, what are we doing hanging out with, with these, those people? The people on the other side of the track. Again, God help us not to be the religious person. Help us not to judge too harshly the people from the other track. But Jesus says something very, in, in my, my sermon, uh, what, what I called my sermon was uh, coming for the sinner. Because Jesus says, I did not come for the righteous. I came for the sinner. See, the religious people were so caught up in, in their belief system that they were too righteous for Jesus. They missed him. I don't want to miss him. I'm a sinner. Through and through, covered by grace. And I continually try to walk in a way that he wants me to walk. Now, this isn't somebody like, oh, you can be a sinner and God came for you and you continue to be a sinner and walk in that way and so that you're more like Jesus. That's not, that's not how that works. See, when the disciples started following Jesus, Levi changed his lifestyle and became more like Jesus. The sinner is continually trying to be more like him. When we accept Christ in our life, he changes us. When he says, come follow me, we follow him where we're at, 
And then we figure out what that actually means as we walk daily with him. But I don't want to be that religious guy that says, oh, but they're too ugly to get there. Or that person isn't exactly the Christian person that I think he should be. We give grace where grace is, and we help them walk through the discipleship of Jesus. See, at the end, when we look at Calvary and we look at the disciples and we look at, 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 his, at Jesus' rebirth and resurrection, it was the disciples that figured out and, and stayed for the Holy Spirit. And that changed their lives. And they were, they weren't, Levi wasn't the tax collector anymore. He was the disciple of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you don't get just to stay in your filth, but you can start there. And so when people come to us in our church who are filthy spiritually, maybe physically, it is our job then to walk beside them and maybe take them down to Jesus instead of criticizing where they're at. The other two stories that we have in Mark 2 are kind of the same thing. I'm going to combine those two. The watchers of the time, and again, the religious people being religious. Now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. So we have John's disciples. And some people came and asked Jesus, how is that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours is not? So this could be a, legit, a legitimate question to Jesus of why, why are you guys not doing what everybody else is doing that is religious? But Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with him. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. So Jesus isn't saying Fasting. In fact, there's a lot of scriptures that show that fasting is, is good. It is a discipline of the faith. That is something that we should take part of. That Jesus himself says that when he leaves, this is a, a future that you should also fast and pray. And then he goes on, and no one sues a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the new piece will be pulled, pulled away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours the old into, new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wineskins. I think the questioning is fair, and, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure all of what this scripture is meant to say, but it has some to do with that Jesus is here on earth, and that there's new wine, there's new wineskins, and that, that there's new things happening in that day. And that to receive all that Jesus had at that time, that they had to take on Jesus' disciplines, and so that the fasting and praying, Jesus is already teaching. I think that sometimes we try to put Jesus into old wineskins. We want him to fit our little box. Sometimes I want Jesus to fit into my life and I don't let him take care of the rest of it. I want to be, I want to have the new wine skin and the new wine. And like I said, I, I don't, I didn't study too far into that scripture. I didn't find all the intricacies in it. But what it spoke to me was to don't put God in a box. And then we have the Lord of the Sabbath. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. The 
Pharisees, again, are questioning Jesus and his authority and wondering why his disciples are acting different than they think they're supposed to be acting. And Jesus mentioned scripture that the Pharisees would know, and then he says something that I think is, is very so true, is that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath, saying that the rules and guidelines were made for that man to be healthy, not the other way around. And sometimes we get so caught up in the rules and guidelines that we forget that Jesus even exists in our relationship. And that's something the Pharisees had taken, had, had fallen into, is that they held so true to Moses' laws and guidelines that they missed the Savior. They missed the Messiah. And when I was reading the scripture, I said, I don't want to miss the Messiah. I'm not, I'm not saying throughout all rules and guidelines, I'm not saying that traditions are not meant there for a reason, that they're not good for our spirit and for our soul. It helps us to kind of keep the left and the right at bay, right? To, to fall to the left of the hill, to fall to the right of the hill, to, to keep the straight path. But when... When Jesus is taking you in different areas and making you uncomfortable, that doesn't always mean that you're in the wrong place. When you're sitting with sinners, that doesn't mean that you're in the wrong place. And if you're holding so strong to your traditions that you forget to see where Jesus is at, then maybe we should take a relook of who we are. Jesus should transform you and should heal your spirit and heal your body. That we would reflect more of what Jesus looks like, and the scripture shows disciples did that. But we didn't start that way. Levi probably was not couth or clean. He had just started following Jesus. God willing, are still, we are still changing to reflect more like Christ. And hopefully, we as a body of believers are able to accept the Levites, that are able to accept the cripples, that are able to accept the people who don't look like us that are from the other side of the track. The thing about the Gospels and the things about this, this, this teaching is that it's not new. You guys have heard this sermon several times, probably by me, a couple of them, because it's in my heart. I have an evangelistic feel of, of wanting to go out and, and, and bring people to Jesus. That's in my heart. And I think that it's a call that God has on everyone. And so I preach it quite a bit. <laughs> but it's also a warning to, for us as, as, as believers of Christ not to become so caught up in, in what people should and shouldn't look like. And to not miss when the Savior is working. To not miss when the Messiah is working. To not miss because we're so caught up in our little boxes of what Jesus should and shouldn't look like. Amen. That when the cripple walks in the room, we, we think that maybe that person shouldn't be the way that he is and that God can't work in him. It's basic Christianity. But as I was reading the scriptures and looking into it, I thought, mm -mm, maybe my heart needs some work. Because I got caught up sometimes when people, I, I work at the, at the jail. It's not right now because it's not open. But when I went to the jail, there were people there that I was like, mm, <laughs> I don't know if God can actually do anything in that person. <laughs> You hear some of the stories, and you're like, ah, maybe, <laughs> hopefully. And God started teaching me that there's faith, that if I want to be one of the four friends, that means that I can't judge by the past or where they're at or what they look like. I need one of the four friends that looks at the crowd and says, you know what, I'm going to go through it. 
And then I, if I can't get through the crowd, I'm going to take him up to the roof and cut a hole and bring him down to Jesus because I know Jesus can work in that man spiritually and physically. That I want to be like Jesus when I look at when I'm, when I'm sitting here with, with sinners and, and, and I don't think Jesus compromised who he was when he sat with them. But he did sit with them. He was a part of their lives. And I've had friends in my life that have said, you know what, Caleb, I respect you because no matter what, you've always been Christian. You've always had faith. And I think that's what people looked at when they saw Jesus. And I hope that today you guys can also be that person that no matter what circumstance you're in, that you can still look like Jesus, even when you're amongst sinners. And you can still love them as a Christian. See, I, I don't expect people to stay where they are. If they say, I found Jesus in my life, I said, that's great. Let's get walking. You don't get to stay where you're at, but I don't expect you to be perfect right away. You're never going to look, you're not, you may not look like the church folk. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and I think that we have this idea of what church folks should be. I think God's transforming that thought process. And I pray that I don't miss him. That's the, that was one of the biggest things that I caught when I was reading the scripture and trying to study it is, man, Pharisees missed him a ton. And that happens throughout all of the Gospels. Lord, help us not to miss what you're doing. Amen. That's right. Just because it doesn't fit in my comfortable zone. Amen. Father, I ask that today you would work. You would have your way. That you would speak to us, God. That if we have that part of that religious feel in us that, that has you in a little box. God, I ask that you expand our, our lifestyle, our ways of thinking, that, God, we would, we would look for you in the ugly and the muck and the mire, that we'd be willing to come alongside of those people that need you desperately, that we'd be one of the four friends that bring that cripple to Jesus, that we would be Levi who just wants to follow you with everything he's got because I know that he's different. Father, that we would be a church that loves unconditionally. Mm -hmm. That walks beside the people that may look like the other side of the track. And Father, we would be more and more like you. In Jesus' name. A dream this last week and um, it was it was an odd dream and uh, it's been on my mind ever since I had it it's one of those dreams that I woke up and I'm like well that was really strange it's not a normal not my normal dream right and every once in a while I have one that I know is from God I, I don't have them often most of them are just me working through stuff but every once in a while I have a dream where I'm like that was a God dream that was from God and that was one of this this in this dream there was a community of people, a Christian community of people that worship together. Uh, they, they they did things together all the time. They had they had a, a, a school. The kids went to school together. They went to Sunday school together. They went to camp together. Okay, it was a community that, that did a lot together. They were a strong Christian community. They were very content, very happy. Uh, and there was a young man in this community and a young woman that had grown up together and they were kind of expected to get married someday. 
because they'd grown up together, they'd been best friends, and they were part of this community. And this this uh, young man went uh, away for a summer for a job or something, and, and he comes back and he brings a young woman back to the community, and he marries her. And she hadn't been a part of the community. She wasn't raised in the community. She didn't look like everybody else did. She didn't dress like they did. She didn't know the language. She didn't, she didn't really fit in at all. And the community was kind of shocked because they had expected him to marry the other girl in the community, and he didn't. And so there was this, this conflict going on, and this new girl, she's not fitting in, and she's pretty upset. She's, they go to some kind of a, of a shower with a bunch of women, and she was wearing a little white sundress, and everybody else is kind of wearing, in my dream, kind of cape dresses, right? She's just not fitting in. And she's really hurt and kind of emotional in the, in the dream. And the woman that was a part, that had been a part of the community that expected to marry him, she was not happy and she was not making it easier. And the whole community was kind of disrupted by this one person that was introduced to the community. And I woke up, well then I was in, the, in there too trying to make them get along. And uh, it wasn't working. And the, the community girl was just said, I, I do not want to accept her. So there was this disruption that was happening in the community, right? And, and I woke up and I'm like, what does this mean? I don't understand. And I talked to several people and, and, and Emmett was the one who actually kind of gave me the most insight, but I felt like it was pr prophetic. And what I wanted to share with you is he was talking, it just became so clear to me. We can't be so much a community that we can't accept who Jesus brings in. And that who he brings in may be a different idea, a different way of doing church, a different, a different way than we're used to. It may not look like we're used to doing it. It may not fit like we're expecting it to fit. But there's the, it may be a person or it may be an idea, a way of doing church. I don't know. But we need to be open to what Jesus wants to do and who Jesus wants to bring into our community and we need to be accepting of whoever that is and however that looks like and it may not look like what we expect and it's hard when we have expectations and it doesn't happen like we expect it can feel like rejection or it can feel painful but if we want to follow Jesus if we want him in our community we have to accept who he brings in and uh, I just I just felt as you were talking that I needed to share that that we need whatever and whomever God wants to bring, and uh, that that seemed really important. Are we supposed to pray for healing? Yes, uh. As uh, we, we prepare to enter into this last song, as is, Caleb was preaching, uh, and, and that was a good word, Caleb, powerful. I was thinking of uh, in the scriptures when Jesus was trying to, there was a bunch of naysayers and Pharisees and doubters, and, and he was trying to say who he was. And, and he said, I've, I've told you plainly who I am. And the scriptures have told you plainly who I am. And so many times, like Caleb was trying to say, we, we don't fully understand all the religious aspects of it. We don't fully under, understand and comprehend the scriptures. And, you know, I don't think we always need to. And Jesus said, if you can't get that, at least believe on the evidence of the miracles. And we have, we have we've seen the evidence of miracles in this body so many times and I believe the Lord is, is saying that this morning and I don't I don't say that to, to bring condemnation or I haven't got that kind of faith but we've seen miracles so let the evidence of the miracles that we have seen in, in this body in, in this atmosphere let faith rise up this morning because of that and I don't know what kind of healing needs to take place this morning sometimes it is we need our sins forgiven and and when when the lord forgives our sins then that opens the door to 
physical healing, but just be obedient to what the Holy Spirit would lead. And, and I think we are supposed to open up for prayer. However, okay, then you see the Holy Spirit's leading. Believe on the evidence of the miracles this morning and let your faith rise up. I don't know what you need, but the Lord does. If you're needing a healing for a particular problem, I want you to, like, like, like I've been having some liver issues, put your hand there, or if it's, if it's your neck, or if it's your, your jaw, or your thyroid, or your whatever it is, touch whatever it is, your back, whatever it is, touch whatever it is that needs God healing. If it's something more like Lyme disease, where it's not a particular place, just, just kind of give yourself a hug, but, but, but I want you to place your hand wherever it is that you need healing, that you need healing today. And if it's spiritual healing, just raise your hand like this and receive it that way. But I want you to touch whatever it is that needs healing today. Whatever God, you need God to touch. Whatever area you need God to touch, I want you to touch it. And then those that are in your family, if you're in a family group, go ahead and, and uh, pray and touch in whoever that you know needs prayer. If you're not in a family group, just, just you touch and we're going to pray. coming before you. We are coming through to, to your throne, Lord, to where you're at. We come in the name of Jesus, and we ask you to touch us, to heal us spiritually, physically, emotionally, that you would heal us. Lord, we, we ask you, we come to you, and we ask you to do a mighty healing in our lives to touch us, Lord God, and to heal us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Oh, Lord, I thank you that your power is still here today, that you still do miracles, and we, we just come before you and ask for healing. In the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Yes. Um, I want to thank Pastor Debbie for sharing that word with us. And as our practice, we, we test the word to see. So is there a witness on that word? Amen. Yes, there is. What a good word to remind us when we accept that for us to be open open to where God is leading us and open to accepting and, and uh, so thank you. Before we go any further, is there, has everyone been obedient to the spirit? We don't want to, we don't want to rush the spirit. Allow time for the spirit to work and for us to be obedient. Yes, Vince. Yes. Me. Um, the last few weeks, I guess when I sit there, I uh, like when I look out the window, I like they're blacked out, but. I feel like it's really dark out there. I mean that like as the world. And uh, you know, it's so bright in here. And I really feel like God is using this place as a to reach so many hearts and to heal so many people. And that uh, he's really just kind of using all of us to make that dark place out there just a little bit better. And that, uh, yeah, it's so basically it. Thank you, Vince, for sharing that. And yes, there's a lot of darkness. There's a dark, lot of darkness in the world, and yet we are called to be that light, that light shining in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome that light. And the light isn't our own. The light we have is the light given to us by our loving Heavenly Father, Amen. that and the power of the Spirit working within us, and that is a light that cannot be quenched. And we don't, we don't cover it up, we don't hide it under a bushel, but we let it shine forth. And I think right now, the darker the world gets, the brighter a little light can be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been in a cave, and, and the cave tour people always like to do this. They like to turn all the lights off, and it's so totally dark that you can't see your hand in front of you, and the light, just a little, a, a little candle or a little match or something, and it's amazing how much one little light can give in that darkness. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at today. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of darkness, but one little light can shine a lot can make a difference. And we want to be faithful to being that light for God's glory. Amen. I had one one thing that kept coming to me too is knowing that we got to let go of things that please our ideas. Yes. If you couldn't hear that, Sue says we gotta let go of our preconceived ideas, our 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 uh, the way we think everything has to be and we have to allow God to work. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's hard. Oh, yes. Yes, it is hard. Yes, and that's what Debbie's vision was and, uh, and the sermon. Thank you, Brother Caleb, for that sermon, Pastor, for leading us. Okay. Um, something that came to mind to me when uh, Caleb was preaching is uh, the Pharisees were always preaching or we're always talking about Mosaic law, trying to follow the law of Moses. But they also added a lot of things to it. There was a lot of man-made traditions and what became laws to the Pharisees. And we have to remember to not, ooh, sorry, to not put our own rules on Jesus. I mean, don't, we can't let our, you know, our preconceived ideas as well. But don't try to make rules for what Jesus can do in your life. Because if you let him, he can do 
infinitely more than you ever thought possible. Thank you for sharing that with us, and yes. Yes. Hallelujah, isn't it exciting to be part of the family, part of the family of God and see God working in, in just situations like this and, and what you have shared, what you have shared and just, you know, we're not doing it alone. We're here together as a family and we're encouraging one another and, and helping one another and, and reaching out and being Jesus' love to the world. Anyone else? Okay, I'll move on into the announcements and prayer requests and stuff. Uh, if you think of something else or, the, or you're sitting there and, and the Spirit's prompting you and you're sort of resisting it and fighting it, go for it. That, that nudge gets rather uncomfortable when God's prompting us to do something and we're fighting it. So, um, a couple announcements just I want to highlight is com coming up in August, uh, two through eight, six, whatever, let me see. Okay, teen mission, Jasper County. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little different this year. A lot of, a lot of little details have to be worked out. Uh, we're ministering in a little different world than we were a year ago. But uh, we want to lift that up and we want to remember that and rejoice in that and look forward to that with anticipation for what God can do through this. Uh, August 16, we have a baptism service planned at Brookside. And again, the details will be determined later. We're still working on it because the uh, things are changing. But if you desire baptism, talk to Pastor Debbie or one of the pastors. And um, yes, let's look into uh, August 16th. Also, yes. Hey. Which we're hoping to do next weekend for the church. Okay. But, uh, we raised over two grand yesterday. So. Glory. Yes. Team Gala was a good event, went well, and and Baroque's group did well, and we just uh, funds were raised for for that ministry, and so we praise that all all the details of that. Yes. Uh, a couple of prayer requests we have. Um, we pray along with Davey for Dave. Dave is having a lot of knee pain, and it's affecting his lack of mobility to be able to get around, but we do rejoice that Dave is here with us today, and we're thankful for that. It's good to see you, Dave, and uh, we will continue to pray for relief from that pain. Uh, we pray along with Doris. Um, Doris shares that Gus, her brother-in-law, may have a toe or part of his foot amputated. This week, or? Okay, so we want to pray for Gus, correct? Yes. yes, pray for him. Pray along with Doris on that. So we have a couple announcements. We've had a couple of uh, prayer requests. Did you have something? Pray for Brian. Um, yes, Brian's having a recheck of his cancer, and that always brings a certain amount of anxiety every time. Uh, you know, he's, he, he went through the cancer, he went through the treatments, he's been clear and clean, but yet, as those dates approach, and I remember in, from my days as cancer patient as well, and you, you still come with a certain amount of anxiety as those, and you can't wait to get a, finally a good result. So pray for him as he anticipates that. Also, um, Oh, here's got more announcements I didn't see. Okay. Or is that for next week? Um, Baroque leadership does not feel comfortable having vacation Bible school this year due to the consideration of health safety. So sadly, we will not be planning on that this year. Um, you want the Easter egg one too? Uh, date set for the delayed annual Easter egg hunt is July 19. Uh, please let Emmett know if you'll be participating in that. Um, team mission, dude. Yes, okay. And I think what we need, we have prayer requests, we have, pray, we have uh, announcements. We need a couple praises before we go to prayer. Something that somebody is thankful for. Uh -huh. Each one of you 
love you too. Yeah. Um, and we were praying for healing, and, and uh, I thought I probably should share. I, we were talking about it at pastoral team uh, meeting uh, on Tuesday, and I had uh, shot some uh, guns with uh, Vince and the, the rest of them, and I didn't have ear protection on because I'm silly. And, uh, but I was like, you know, in my own stupidity, uh, I would still like healing for my ears because it rang for like four or five days. And so we prayed for my, uh, for my ears, and they stopped ringing immediately. And I actually hear better than I have in a bit. So um, just praise God that he, even in my own stupidity, that he still heals me. So. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay. Okay. If you didn't hear all that, just praise for Donna and the wedding. That was a week ago, and uh, right, yeah. yeah, and it went well. It was beautiful, and we thank you for that. And also now for safe travels as everybody returns back. So yes, we do have praises, and I'm sure there's. Oh, there's another one. Yes. Uh, to the wedding thing. Okay. Uh, Praise God for that. God is good. God is good. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do have things to be rejoicing for and thanking you for, and we do give you the honor and the glory for the restoring of the hearing for restoring, taking away the swelling and the pain, for a, a wedding that went smoothly and a, a beautiful service and a beautiful time. Lord, we just, we thank you for all these things. And I'm sure that there were more praises within our heart that maybe people didn't come up or, or stand up or, or share them out loud, but Lord, you know the praises within our heart. And we do lift them up in thankfulness and praise you. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, because of the way you work with, with us and through us and just your abundant blessings upon us. Thank you, Lord. We lift up the upcoming events that we have planned, Lord, and those are our plans, and we've had to change our plans, and, and even there might be more changes, Lord, and we lift these things up because we ask for your blessing upon them because we want to be obedient to you, Lord. So for Teen Mission... For the baptism service, for other events coming up, Lord, may you lead, may you guide. May we hear your voice and be obedient and follow. may not be the way we had planned it, but Lord, we want it to be the way you plan it, to go along with your plans for these things. And for those prayer requests, Lord, we pray for Gus. We pray for a safe surgery, a good surgery, Lord, but we pray that there will be very minimal that will have to be removed, Lord, that instead there will be healing taking place. We know you can do that. And so we ask for that healing touch and a peace and a calmness and just an awareness of your presence through this challenge. We pray for Brian as he has testing and then as he waits for those results, Lord, we just pray for a, a calmness in his spirit and we pray for good results. Continue to lift up Hayden. Lord, we're thankful for the progress he has made, but we pray for continued and complete and total restoration there. We're thankful for the way you have healed and for, so far. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you. Jeff Gover, Lord, we, right, Jeff? Yes, we're thankful for the healing he has from the, the COVID. He was struggling, and Lord, you have... You have restored. You have provided healing there. We thank you for that. We pray for, for Dave. We're thankful that he is able to be with us today. And we're, we pray for the healing of those needs or, uh, or removal of that pain so that he will be able to be more mobile and be able to get around easier. 
but we're thankful even with the challenges and struggles to, to move, he came here today, Lord, and we rejoice with him. We worship with him and praise God for that. So, Lord, our other concerns that we have within our hearts, we lift them up silently to you as well, Lord. You know our needs, and we know that you care for each of your children. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, uh, just a reminder, the offering plate is back there. So for your offering, since we don't pass the plate anymore, but opportunity to share in God's ministry is still available in that way. Uh, if there's nothing else, I'll invite you to rise for the benediction. May you go and speak truth to those who will listen. Go in peace. Amen.